Hi, it's Kurt Sex here with the next in the series of videos about building Linux from scratch from version 1.0 all the way to the latest version. So as you can see on the screen, I've got the manual up for, or the book rather, for version 8.2. And I've chosen this version because it doesn't appear to have any um, host requirement, host system requirements that aren't met. Um, in going from the previous version that I built, which was Cross Linux from Scratch 3.0.0. And if you recall from that video, that version was approximately the same equivalent version as Linux from Scratch 7.5. And as I also stated in that video, I chose Cross Linux from Scratch to get the Linux from Scratches that I was building into the 64 bit environment. So it does mean, um, with any luck, I'm hoping that this version 8.2 will be built as a 64-bit version because we've booted into the Cross Linux from scratch 3.0.0, which was targeted at 64-bit. I haven't gone through and done a complete build on this this time. I've done some various checks. Um, I'm pretty certain that it's going to build okay um, in the tests. In the final um, part, where we build the build the last tool chain, the final tool chain, there were one or two errors that occurred. Um, one in particular, I couldn't really count for. So I'm going to be interested to see if that um, happens again, um, which gave me a little bit of concern. Um, but having said that, I'm not completely sure it's anything to worry about. But so we'll see if that crops up again. But apart from that, I, I didn't want to push the version too far because I was coming from Cross Linux from scratch. I've only built that a few times myself in the past and it's never been a completely successful build in that. It's never booted up without any problems. Um, and also given that I've hacked it to um, get GPM working, even though that didn't work completely well. And given that, if you remember, the Arsys log daemon didn't seem to initialize properly, um, I'm I'm still not 100% certain that was a 100 100% good build if you like. Um so I'm a little bit wary about that. It's obviously something I'm missing when I'm building cross linux from scratch possibly. So um it would be interesting to see how a complete build of version 8.2 goes. Um I've looked beyond 8.2 and it does seem from 8.2 with a few upgrades I think I can go directly to the current version which is 12.1 um, and of course we're in the realms where the um, Linux and Scratch book is more or less stabilized although at version 10 the uh, method for compiling Linux and Scratch was changed to a, what I call a proper cross compilation process um, I think from my limited knowledge up to version 10 um, they called it cross-compiling, but I don't believe it was a true cross-compile, um, whereas version 10 does use a, a real uh, Canadian cross-compile. Um, so, yeah, it's apart from that major difference, the manuals more or less settled down into something that you recognize roughly from, I guess, from about, well, probably from, sometime version 7 really but certainly from version 8 onwards it's it's fairly recognizable 8.2 is a version i've never built before um i've only started building linux and scratch regularly at each release since i started doing these videos when i started in 2019 um, and that was version 8.4 if i can recall correctly uh, and i can't remember what the previous version so that was as built kind of lost in lost interest around version 7 time and in fact the project did look like it was getting a bit um, forgotten about around that time the releases were a bit haphazard um, beyond Linux from scratch seemed to get abandoned for a while there, there's quite a few versions of Linux from scratch 7.x that haven't got equivalent beyond Linux from scratch versions so um, it could be why I lost interest in it for some time um, so, yeah, from my point of view, from personal point of view, I've never built this version before. It'd be interesting to see if there are any major differences. As I say, I've gone through key parts of it and I can't really see that much difference. Um, but I'm not going to 
uh, go through this with the same intensity, perhaps, as I did with Cross Linux and Scratch or some of the earlier ones, because um, it was a bit of a wing and a prayer trying to get some of them built. I, I'm not really expecting there to be any problems with this. Um, it's got a thorough set of host system requirements. It's fairly modern still, even though it's, what, six years old since it's been published. It was published on the 2nd of March 2018. Um, I'm, I'm expecting it to go fairly smoothly. Um, and likewise for the next and final video in this series uh, with version 12, which will obviously be built on 8.2, I expect that to go very smoothly. So I'm not going to concentrate on explaining what I'm doing or anything. There might be, again, sometimes, as I've done in um, the 6.3, I think, um, where I'm just not going to talk. It's no point in in me just repeating what I'm doing, copying and pasting, which is all I'll essentially be doing for a lot of the build, especially in the final system. Um, I'll maybe just chat about things I'm doing that um, need to be explained because they're not in the book or maybe if something goes wrong, um, something I've done wrong that I need to fix. Um, so, it, yeah, I suppose really these last two versions are going to be just um, versions to complete the whole series. To, to get it from version 1 to the latest version, which is 12.1. So um, I may as well get on with it. I'll SSH into the box. Now, as you recall from the previous video, I don't need to piggyback onto my server anymore, um, which has an older version of OpenSSH running um, and even the Telnet daemon that's running on there as well. Um, or, or rather, not the Telnet daemon, sort of the SSH daemon which I was using initially. So initially, I was um, SSHing from the modern compute, which you can see here, which is an up to date version of Debian 12, and then onto that machine, which had, I think, Linux from Scratch 10 on it, which had an older version of SSH, which allowed me to connect to older versions of SSH. And the even older versions that wouldn't connect, I used Telnet from that machine to get into the very old versions of Linux and Scratch that I was building. So like I say, from now, I can go directly into it. So I'll have to connect as root. Um, and the machine name is E7500. Oops, I did this before as well. Now I'm actually on the same machine as I built 6.3 on. Um, I thought I'd stay on here. Well, again, partly for two reasons. I've, the two machines I'd like to have been on, which would have been newer, because this machine is now about 9 or 10 years old compared to the Linux from scratch going to build. Um, the two machines I'd like to have built on, which are newer, are unavailable at the moment. Um and also it would have been a quicker compile time, but having said that, this is a Core 2 Duo, and although it's only got two cores, um, it still seems to build in a reasonable amount of time. I'm hoping for the last one to get onto um, a fairly modern machine, so that will be a quick build. Um, but yeah, this might not be as fast as the Cross Linux from Scratch build. Um, especially as, again, I will be testing the tool chain, but I'm not going to be running tests for other parts of the system. So it might be just a little bit longer to build than the cross limbs and Scratch 3.3. So usual thing, I'm going to just nip through. And, well, first of all, I'll create a partition because part of this will be running the... Um, host system requirements to find out if the current system is up to scratch, which like I said, I've already checked it is, but let's uh, do that anyway. So yeah, as I say, the release date of this is 2nd of March, 2018. So it's about six years old now. Um, and it's on a process that it's about uh, 15 years old, roughly. But as I say, it still shows that um, it, will still, it will still show that the process is quite capable um, obviously if it was something like a graphical environment it might start to show its age then but for this type of stuff it, it's still going to be quite um, a reasonable machine to build on 
So yeah, the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new partition. So let's look at what we've got. So there's all the previous partitions with all the previous builds. So we're currently on SDA 10. Uh, there you can see SDA 10 is the root. Um, and just to quickly show you the machine we're still on. So it's still this Core 2 Duo E7500 at 29 or 2.93 gigahertz. And as I've shown before, it's a machine with 16 gigs. So it's going to have plenty of space, even for an up-to-date um, Linux from scratch. It's to have, have plenty of memory available to compile. Um, especially as it's only got two cores. I think even if it had four cores, it would be plenty of RAM to, to build in. So let's create the partition on SDA disk. And it's going to be a new one. And just take the default sector. The last sector, I'm going to go for an 8 gigabyte partition again. Um, I think that's going to be probably the minimum now um, if it's not enough I'm going to have to use uh, GPARTED to expand that so if it does happen then perhaps I could show that in use possibly as part of the video um, once again you can see how the different versions of um, I imagine it's core cool utils I imagine F disk is part of. I'm not sure to be quite honest, um, but you can see how it's decided to use a different number for. So I, I, I would have created that by specifying plus 8G as I just have done, um, and it seems every different version calculates or uses the sectors in a different way. Um, so that's quite interesting. It could be one version uses the byte binary format of 8 gigabytes and another one uses the decimal version of 8 gigabytes or decimal interpretation. So let's write that. Um, it says that it can't update or it won't use the new version um, or it's at least held in memory. So as usual what I'm going to do is to reboot and allow that to be actually read correctly so I can use it properly without any risk for anything going wrong. So I'll just wait for the machine to reboot itself. Okay, we're at the grub menu and it's booting so I should be able to If we get a prompt back, okay, looks like it's going to just hang there because I didn't log out in time. Okay, let's start it up on here. Uh, hopefully that'll time out. Yeah, it's just timed out now actually. So what I'll do is I'll go back here. So I've got that partition, I'm going to use this command here to create an ext4. So if you recall from the previous version, CLFS 3.0, or well, the current version running actually, um, that had ext4 capability, I ensured that that capability was already built into the kernel. So in theory, I should be able to run this command here with the correct partition. And yes, it's formatting ext4, and I should be able to mount that as well. Um, now, I've already got a swap device, and there it is there that's already active. Uh, very unlikely to need anything out of that swap partition, so I'm going to ignore that. Um, but the only thing about changing that, just keep it as it is. So let's now export the LFS variable. And naturally, as before, as always, check that if you're unsure if it's been set. 
So let's now create our mount point and mount our partition at that location. STA11. And there you go, it's mounted correctly. Uh, and we can see what's in it. So that shows that the kernel driver is working for ext4. <coughs> I don't need to do swap on because as you saw, it's already active. There it is there. So let's move on. And right, did I miss the host system requirements? I did, didn't I? I Skip past it talking. Uh, yeah, so let's go into LFS and run this script just to check the environment. Uh, let's just quickly go through these. So as I have checked this, it should be all okay, but there's no harm in checking again. So the bash version is okay. We've got 4.3, we need 3.2. Pin utils 2.17. We've got, oh, and the um, symlink is set as well to bin bash, so that's okay. Bin utils, we've got 2.24, that's okay. Bison 2.3, we've got version 3, so that's fine. Um, the yak link has been set, as you can see there. Bzip 2, we've got 106, so that's fine. Core utils 6.9, we've got 8.22. Diff utils 2.81, we've got 3.3. Find utils 4.2.31, we've got 4.4.2, Gork 4.01, we've got 4.1.1, and it says a sim link should link Ork to Gork, and that's right. And GCC 4.7, we've got 4.8.3, so that's fine, and obviously the G is there as well with the same version. GLC 2.1.1. We've got 219, so that's fine. Grep 251A, we've got 219. GZIP 1312, we've got 1.6. Linux kernel 3.2, we've got 3.14, so that's fine. M4, 1.4.10, we've got 1.4.17. Make is 3.81, and we've got 4. Patch 254, we've got patch 2.7.1. Perl 5.8.8, .8, we've got 5.20, so that's fine. Sed 415, we've got 4.2.2. Tar 1.22, we've got 1.27.1. Texinfo 4.7, we've got 5.2, sorry. And finally, XZ needs 5.0.0, and we've got 5.0.5. .5. So, as I say, everything's fine. Got no extra work to do, and perhaps more importantly, the G++ compiler works as well, so that's all okay. So let's carry on with this. Um, I'm actually going to move that uh, script version check into sources. Change the mode of sources. Okay, now we need to get the sources, so I'm going to use links to go to my um, server where I've got them already. Oh, why, did I, why is that cleared the screen? That's interesting. And I want to go to LFS 8.2. Okay, so I'm going to download uh, I'll download the boot scripts. I'm not sure if they're already part of the package, actually. They might not be. Let's download that. And download that. So you can see this tarball of packages. Is, um, I've not even compressed it because I think the compressed version was actually slightly bigger than the uncompressed version. But you can see that it's uh, grown quite a lot inside. It's nearly 400 megabytes. I think the first version was about 100 megabytes of Linux from scratch. So I'll save that. I'll also, while I'm here, download the BLFS parts for building later on at the end of the build. So 
So I'll grab these. That's everything I need. So let me check. That they have, or well, at least the packages have come down. Okay, they have. So let me extract that. Okay, they're all gone into a directory. Okay, so the boot scripts are there. Let's check to see if they're exactly the same. They should be. I wouldn't expect them to be different. Yep, they're identical. So I'm just going to move everything that's in um, ff8.2packages into the current directory and remove that directory now yes I've also got the original tarp all there but as you've seen probably in my videos before occasionally very occasionally I do accidentally delete an archive a tarp all before I've used it so I'll leave that there um, yep, there it is there. So I'll leave that there as that'll be my lifeline rather than download it all again. So that's got the packages. Let's check the MD5 sums of each individual package and they're all there. They are, so that's good. That's all the packages. That's all the package, uh, patches. Final preparations. Make a tools directory. Oh, didn't do the pop D there. And a sim link. Okay, so that exists because there's a tools directory left over from CF CLFS. And you can see also the tools2 directory I created for a couple of uh, programs that were needed. I think XZ and TAR as I remember. So if I show you what's in there you can see um, there's like some kind of 64-bit stuff so what I'm going to do is just move the tools to another directory being this is the host system I've got to be careful what I do with it um, and if I go back now and retry that command there, that now works. So adding the LFS user, password, changing the ownership, oh, password, okay. Change ownership. As you can see, I'm just going to hammer through this, <clears throat> uh, but without not reading the screen, which is what I just did there. Okay, so bash profile, bash RC, and I'm just going to modify that bash RC to include the make flags to allow both cores to be used while building them. Why haven't I got Vi there? It's interesting. I'm sure that was available. Uh, 
user bin. It wouldn't be in. No, it wouldn't be an S bin, would it? Right, I don't know what what's happened to that. I'm sure I built that. Um, maybe it wasn't built for CLFS. I'm sure it was. It was definitely built in the temporary directory because I remember using it in the part where I was building the final CLFS system. So um, I'd be surprised if it's not available unless I skipped it or didn't install it or something. Um, right, okay. Well, rather than waste time with that, I'll just copy this and do export make flags equals minus j2 eof so if I look at that file right I wrote it because of what I typed so let's I should have put another chevron there to append what I just typed but I didn't so it's overwritten it so what I'll do is I'll do it this way instead. Okay, so that's better. So now if I do source bash profile echo um, LFS, for example, check that that's there, and also make flags is there as well, so that's fine. And in fact, now the book actually tells us that we can do things like this. So once again, let's echo LFS, just be doubly sure. Gives us some more reminders about ensuring hosts requirements are up to scratch and also how the build process works, as if we didn't know it. 